In this video, I'm going to share my three-step approach to write the background of a study with some practical examples. Writing the background of a study can be tricky because you need to provide enough information without overwhelming your reader. In this video, I'm going to break down each step and provide enough information and examples to you. So at the end, you should be able to use this approach as a template to write a strong background of the study. I will also share with you how to establish the context of your research and also highlight the importance of your study for your readers. Background of the study is part of the introduction section of your research work. In this section, you need to explain where your research journey began, what are the motivations of your study, and on which basis you developed your research questions. Generally speaking, you need to establish the context of the research with a general overview of the field and then narrow it down to your topic. Let me share with you what you need to cover in this section. Follow a funnel approach and provide a general overview of the field and then narrow it down to your topic. In this process, briefly review what we already know about the topic in both practice and literature. Review real-world evidence about the issue from the industry reports, government reports, newspaper articles, and support them with the statistics. Then, show what we know in the literature. In this part, you can review relevant theories and key findings of past studies. And don't forget to highlight the importance of the issue and briefly review relevant concepts, terms, and definitions. Your brief literature review should end at the research gaps and finally present the context of the study. So imagine your background of the research as a funnel that starts with a broader discussion and ends at your topic. Then present the key issues that drove you to choose this topic as your research and also highlight the importance of your study. The length and detail provided in each part of the background of the study, of course, depends on the complexity of the topic and the format that you are following. Let me share an example with you to show you what I mean by a final approach. For this example, I've used the materials of two of the papers that I already have published. You can find a link to these two papers in the description below. Suppose your research topic is financial burden, locus of control, and quality of life of cancer patients. This topic is a combination of two of my published papers. For such a topic, you have several choices to start your first paragraph, which is, as we discussed, the general and broad overview of your field. Um, you may start with finance and financial burden, locus of control, or you can start quality of life or maybe cancer patients. So this depends on your audience, your field, and the importance of each concept in your work. For example, if the area of your work is in the field of health, you should sell your research paper as something in this field, and you may start with something about cancer and cancer patients. So in this case, you may start with the first paragraph of your background with stating, let's say, uh, breast cancer is a principal form of cancer and is a significant cause of mortality in women worldwide. Then you can highlight the issue in the real world by providing some statistics related to the topic and reviewing some relevant information from the lens of your study. For example, you may continue with a report by UK Cancer Research estimated that more than 1.68 million new breast cancer cases were diagnosed and around 522,000 women died from breast cancer in 2022 worldwide. So, and then you provide the references here. So you see, we are highlighting the importance of the issue. We are referring to industry report or maybe government reports. And um, then I continued with um, incidence rates remain high in both developed and developing countries. The reason that I stated this statement is because um, this topic is in Malaysia, so we are highlighting that this topic is important, this issue is important in developing countries as well. And then I mentioned in Malaysia, the International Agency for Research in Cancer estimated 5,410 new breast cancer cases and an age standardized rate of 38.7 per 100,000 in 2022. So now we are discussing about the importance of the issue in the context of Malaysia as well. 
Now you narrow it down and link it to your topic, which is financial burden, locus of control, and quality of life of cancer patients. For example, you would continue with reviewing literature and narrowing it down to um, your topic by stating, let's say, Malaysian women have poor survival rate from breast cancer, and then you support it with literature, uh, I mean with references, and even those who survive would suffer from psychological health issues and low quality of life. You see, we are including um, the other important variables or concepts in our problem statement. So you, we are linking them, we linking them with a plan. This has attached the attention and interest of researchers who seek to improve the quality of life of cancer patients. So this highlights the importance of this research in literature. Among them, research suggests that locus of control and financial burden are two of the factors that contribute to the psychological health of cancer patients and play an important role in patients' health-related quality of life and their references. As you can see, we link the broader topic of cancer patients to the other three areas of our research. And then, in the last sentence, we mention all important keywords of this research. It means we linked everything together and we ended up ended um, to our topic. What I mean is that you should have a plan to write the background of the study. I mean, you should know where to start and where to end. You need to know how to link the sentences and paragraphs of the background of the study together. So you need to know what should be the first sentence, how to link the first sentence to the second, how to link the second sentence to the third, how to link the first paragraph to the second, and where you want to end. So you need to properly plan the background of the study and then write the content. And be selective and critical in writing. Don't write for the sake of writing. Some people think that if they write more, then they can convince people that they are producing higher quality materials. But this is not true about research work. So when you are writing, always ask yourself this question. Is this relevant to my work? If it's not, please don't write it. Otherwise, you may confuse the readers and examiners. Now let me share my three-step method for writing a strong research background. Print this slide and use it as a template for writing the background of your study. Generally, start with a broader idea and narrow it down to your research topic. Then in the first part, you need to show what we already know about the topic in practice. I personally prefer to first provide an overview of the topic in practice and then support it with evidence like industry and government reports or newspaper articles and statistics. And when you write the background of your research, don't miss the opportunity to highlight the significance of the issue by providing evidence of the importance of the topic. Also, in this part, briefly review relevant concepts, terms, definitions, and ideas. In this part of your work, you need to help your target audience get familiar with your research work. So, this is what you need to provide in the first block of your background of the study. Then the second block, or the second part of your background of the study, review relevant theories. This is the part that we need to discuss what we know in the literature. You need to review relevant theories. You need to review key findings of the literature and demonstrate that you are aware of the current body of knowledge. So, citing review articles, systematic literature reviews, meta-analysis studies, and of course, recently published articles are strongly recommended. Show that you have done a very good and comprehensive literature review and support each statement with several good citations. Your review should be very brief and concrete as you will comprehensively review the literature in the review, literature review chapter of your work. So your literature review at this section should end at research gaps and what is missing in the literature. What do we want to do to fill this research gap? So in many thesis format, and in many papers styles, research gaps are presented in a separate section too. However, here in the background of the study, you need to briefly highlight the research gaps to prepare your audience for your next sections and next chapters of your research. So don't worry about it. Just briefly mention about your research gap. And finally, in the last part of the background or in the last block of your background of the study, you can present the context of the study from the lens of your research. 
Again, the context of the study can be presented in a separate section, but here you briefly review the importance of conducting this study in such context. It means you explain what makes this context a unique case to study. Of course, each context is unique, but the information that you provide should be relevant to the topic from your research, from the lens of your study. So as we discussed, when you write anything in the background of your research, always ask yourself, is this relevant to my topic? Where you're providing a general overview of the field and narrowing down the discussion to your topic, you may refer to the context several times, and that's fine. I mean, um, here is just to emphasize that you should not forget to highlight the importance of the context of your study and show why it's important to conduct this research here in this context. Let's have a look at the introduction section of my paper as a good example for the background of a study. You can follow the same approach for your thesis, dissertation, or research project. I posted the link to this article in the description section below. As you can see, in the first paragraph, I've provided some evidence from the real world by referring to industry reports and supporting the importance of the topic by providing some statistics. Then in the second paragraph, I briefly reviewed the past literature. As you can see, I've supported each statement with several references. While I'm reviewing the literature, I provided the definition of locus of control to ensure my readers understand this concept. Look at this. I provided seven references to support just one statement. This is how your background of the study should look like. I'm not really a big fan of writing according to someone and then the statement. I usually write the statement and then support it with several references. Then I've highlighted the research gap and why we need to conduct this study in Malaysia. So the context of a study here is Malaysia. I personally prefer to provide more information about the context of the study here, but due to the word limit and the format that I followed, I couldn't provide that information here in detail. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any comment, question, or if you have any suggestion for my future videos, please leave them in the comments below. I read each comment and reply them. And if you are interested in research and publication topics, I'm making a new series of videos. Please subscribe to this channel and press the notification bell to get notified when I upload the next videos.